Hi Year 11, this is a video to give you a hand with the final uh, bit of your NEA to make sure that you've got everything in there that you need to get as many marks as possible. So on this video, I'm going to take you through uh, the slides that you can see on the page here. So this one, further research, I'll explain a little bit. We haven't spoken about that very much. We've spoken about final design um, and we've spoken about orthographic drawings. This individual components one I'll explain in a little bit more detail and we've also spoken briefly about the cutting list but I'm going to go through that in a bit more detail now. So the first slide, um, I'm actually going to be setting this as a homework in the next uh, couple of days and it's to make sure that you just have one more page of research in your, um, in your NEA. So this could be linked to a variety of different things. It could be linked to materials. It could be you testing out a process. Um, lots of you are doing research and or making products to do with animals or that have to fit people. So it could be about dimensions. And for people, these are called anthropometrics. How are you going to make sure that your product fits people? So you can see on this page that this student, because they were going to put some electronics in their project, they've done some research into the types of electronics they could use, and they've even done some testing. Now, this is really good because it's primary, but it doesn't have to be primary research like this. It can be secondary research. It could be you just looking at a few different types of materials. You could even be looking for the costs of things, different components that you might use, hinges, um, all different types of things. But having just one more page of research in your PowerPoint will really strengthen your project. The next slide I would be expect, uh, expecting to see then is your final design. I would expect to see this done in CAD, um, so either in space claim. Um, I know that some of you uh, use Blender, you could use Blender. Uh, if you struggle with space claim or any of these CAD programs, please come and see me after school anytime and I can give you a hand with them. But using CAD um, gets you more marks and also helps to show your product in a more realistic manner. Um, this is an OK example here. The CAD's pretty good. The annotation on here really should be all about how the design meets your spec. So why you've chosen it. and how it meets your, your specification, okay? So talking about things like how, your, how it suits your client, how you've combined all your developments together, that can all go on the annotation for your final design. This next page is a bit of a bonus page. If you're going for the grade seven, grade eight, grade nine, I would recommend that you do this. You can do this in CAD if you want to. You could just show the individual parts in CAD or you could sketch them um, individually. And that's what you can see that this student has done here. She's broken down her product into all of the individual parts. So the main sort of sections of her sort of rocket design. And she's explained the different types of materials that could be used, things like acrylic. We've got some dimensions on there. We've got some idea of how things might be made. Um, so this page kind of explains all the individual parts of your product and how they could be manufactured. So this is just kind of an extra thing to do, especially if you're going for those higher grades. It also helps you to think about how they might be connected together. Um, it just shows a good understanding of your product. This one. This is super, super, super easy, especially if you have a space claim uh, drawing of your design. If you have that, then it's literally a click of a button on the program to create an orthographic drawing. And if you're struggling with this, I will be putting a video out about how to do an orthographic drawing. But I can also show you after school if you'd like to come uh, by any time this week. So you can see it's got all the dimensions on here. It shows a top a front and a side view, as well as a 3D view. You can see that these are all lined up because this is how an orthographic drawing should be. They should all completely line up with each other. And this is what's called a technical drawing. And it's actually what you would give to someone like an engineer or a manufacturer so that they could actually make your product. 
so it's a very accurate drawing. It gets you a lot of marks, so it's quite an important thing to have in your PowerPoint. The last um, one that I, I want to talk about in this section is the cutting list. Now, I suggest you do this as you go a little bit. I find this really hard to do if you are trying to do this before you've actually made your product. It's quite difficult to think about the types of things that you might need. So I suggest that maybe some of you have now started doing some making that you start to add to this um, as you kind of go. So you might, for example, have all of your different parts listed here. So you can see that she's kept it relatively simple. And this kind of links quite nicely with that components page that you may have um, drawn out. And you might be able to link all those different parts, explain what quantity you need of each of these parts, the approximate dimensions of them, how you think you might make each part. So you're going to laser cut them. Are you going to 3D print them? and the material that you think you might uh, make them from. You can also put cost on, and I will be giving you a cost uh, sheet that you can use to estimate the cost, but it doesn't have to be super, super accurate, the cost, just some indication of how much these materials cost would be really beneficial. So now that I've chatted you through the final design sections, I'm going to talk you through what I would expect to see in your manufacturing diary. So all of you have started making something. I know there's a few people that haven't, um, but most of you have started making your final thing. So the most important thing to be doing, and I don't know why I'm drawing an old fashioned camera, but you must be taking loads of photos. It's really, really important that you take photos all the way through your project so that you've got plenty to actually talk about in your manufacturing diary. Um, the worst thing that you can do is have no photos and this doesn't look good then when you hand your work in, there's not enough evidence that you fully understood the process that you've gone through. And also the exam board can challenge us if they say actually has this student made this product. If you've not got a lot of photos of you actually doing it, it looks, it doesn't look good. So you can gain marks in this section for naming specific tools, materials and process names. So, for example, you might say you used a hacksaw, for example, to cut metal. You might use aluminium rather than saying metal like I have just done. You might say 3D printing or laser cutting. So if you're naming those specific things, that's going to get you more marks. Quality control is really important. I'm going to explain that in a second. Uh, any mention of health and safety things that you might have had to think about, for example, on the pillar drill using clamps. Uh, using safety goggles, all of those little health and safety things that you might need to consider. And also, as you've been making your product, I can guarantee that everyone will have made some changes to their uh, design. And if you highlight these in your work as a development, you can get marks for that in the development section as well as the making section. So I'm going to show you a good example of a manufacturing diary. Um, here it is. So the first thing you can see is that there's plenty of pictures, nice pictures of each of the different stages, showing all of the sort of materials, the processes. Um, next thing, you can see that she's used specific names of processes. She's given some dimensions. She's also like evaluated a little bit about how the, the kind of process has gone, which is great. Um, and you can also see here, that we've got development highlighted really clearly. So that means I can give her marks here for the development of her product as she's going along, not just the manufacturing of it. And you'll see that on the next couple of slides as well. You can see that she's taken a pause here in her making to test a material or an idea. That's kind of like a development as well. So that can also get you plenty of marks. So even if you've just tried a few things out when you've started to make, Evidencing all of that is going to get you loads of marks. Here's another example of a manufacturing diary. So you can see, again, nice uh, range of pictures to show each of the different parts, lots of annotation. And um, she hasn't massively done quality control very well uh, in her PowerPoint, but quality control is basically ensuring that you are taking steps to make sure that your product is made really accurately. 
So lots of you I've been encouraging to make things like templates. So for example, if you were marking out some holes, uh, you might laser cut a little template like this out of card and use that to mark onto your piece of material. That is quality control. That gets you marks if you are talking about to make sure that my product is made to good quality. I use templates. I used a metal rule to make sure that I measured it accurately. I used a tri-square to make sure that it was a 90 degree angle. Um, anything that you think has enabled your product to be made more accurately, it, you need to mention as quality control. So I would be putting little symbols around where you've mentioned quality control in your PowerPoint. OK, so bear that in mind, quality control, especially for those high grades, seven, eights and nines, you're going to want to be mentioning quality control as much as you possibly can. This is the last slide I'm going to show you. She had a few more, but I want to highlight again how she's put development. OK, so she's again showing that she's made a change to her design because maybe something didn't work. So highlighting changes, mistakes, anything like that will get you loads of marks. Um, and the last thing I would say is look how she's put also screenshots as well as photos of the work that she's been doing. OK, so photos. Annotation to explain what's going on with the correct tools and material names, um, health and safety. So, for example, later on in the process, she was mentioning about using a particular glue, which uh, you need to wear gloves for safety specs, all that sort of stuff. Um, have I just put Googles? Yeah, goggles uh, and also quality control. So, for example, here, laser cutting this out of multiple layers of plywood is much more accurate than if you were cutting it by hand. So that is a good example of quality control. So this is kind of the stuff you should be working on at the moment. The final design stuff, the manufacturing diary, that's the really important part that you need to be keeping up with. Um, whenever you're in a lesson, you need to make sure that you download your pictures and you write them up. I know that's a lot to ask for at the moment when you've got other homework going on, but just get this done um, and then you can catch up on other types of bits um, later. OK, so manufacturing diary and your final design. I hope that was really useful. The next video, I'm going to show you what the evaluation section is all about.